This was when we had the thing hanging on the ceiling, the light. Okay, I don't need to know the history of things. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know what that is. Decluttering is difficult for so many reasons. It's a lot of work, but actually the physical work of it, I think, is actually the easiest part. Today, I'm helping my oldest daughter, Rachel, up in her bedroom, and then my husband is helping me in the basement. Decluttering is emotionally hard for all of us, and you're not alone. Hello and welcome to my home. If you're new here, my name is Karen. I'm giving you a little break from decluttering my basement and I'm up here in my oldest daughter Rachel's room. We're decluttering her clothes. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are Rachel's closet. She has this nice big double closet, but this is the only side that has things hanging on hangers. The other side is shelved. Then she started without me a little bit. So here are things she wants to put away. Here are some things she already has decided to get rid of. And here are some things she's going to keep but need to be altered. Also, we're first going to go through her box of socks that is usually on the closet floor. I've seen those faces, I've heard all the lies, but you ain't gazing on someone in denial. Oftentimes when you watch a decluttering video, you see it start at the point where we're at right now. You see the declutter start. They show you what they're going to declutter and they start going. And that leaves out the entire battle of getting in that room in the first place. The first battle is scheduling a time where you're going to do the decluttering in the first place. It's not easy to make space and time for a dedicated declutter because there's always things that you would rather be doing. A lot of times there's things that you need to be doing and you have to schedule that time. Once we make a pass and do a deep declutter through the whole house, get our basement and our attic eaves straightened out, then what I'd like to be doing is what I see so often people are doing, and that's to have a box handy in each room so that as a person is going about their day to day, getting dressed and doing a quick tidy, that if they just see something they think they don't want anymore, they can quickly put it in the box. I'm also trying to get super disciplined to not just put things in the basement or in the attic eaves because I don't want to make a decision and so I just box it up and put it down there to be dealt with another time. I've definitely learned that lesson the hard way and I'm trying really hard to only store away things that we know we're going to use again. So just five minutes and we already have all these we're getting rid of and here is her keep pile all nice and organized. This is the beginning of her donate pile so I'm just going to go through it I'm going to see anything that's stained or ripped will go in the trash and anything else I'll fold so that we can start a bag for Goodwill. Our son Fran does our dump run every week because we do not have trash pickup and so he's been super helpful to take those things to the trash and then I try to schedule a day to go to Goodwill every week. Rachel's headed to her closet now and the first thing she's going to do is pull out anything that is seasonal items that are coming out because we head into spring and summer that we're going to be packing away in the basement. Of course, Rachel is an adult, but as a mom, it's always tough to see kids get rid of perfectly good clothes that you feel like have a lot more wear and tear in them. And that is something I've had to learn to let go of, or we end up with a lot of clothes that no one is going to wear. So one of the difficulties I have is on the one hand, I want to be minimalistic. And on the other hand, I hate the thought of money being wasted. Oh, this was a maybe because I wanted to, I love this turtleneck, but there was like a little hole inside of it. Hold on. Like the tiniest. Like you could patch it up in a second. If I could just put that in alter. No, I don't want to get rid of it. 
Rachel had already gone through these drawers to pull out anything that she wasn't keeping or that was too damaged. And now she's just going through and pulling out anything that is off season that we can pack it away. One of the things I have learned from you all, and I so appreciate all of you who take the time to comment, is that we're going to be storing these in clear Rubbermaid boxes in our basement, not in cardboard boxes, but having it sealed up so that we don't have to worry about anything getting into them. When we're ready to use off-season clothes again, we just go through the box real quick and make sure we still want all the things we packed away. These, I need to retire because I've had them for 10 years. Anyways, I need to do something about my boots collection because I don't like getting any like boots except for the knockoff tempo ones. I feel like if I'm going to keep any of these, I need to keep just one. I can wear these pants that way. But probably this one, or this one, because like they've had their days. Yep. This is my constant thought process. Is maybe I'll do. Uh, what about these though? You're True. I think it's definitely a good thing to have a buddy with you to help you when you declutter. Even if that person isn't doing anything except validating you as you talk through whether or not you want to get rid of things. It just is so helpful to have that person there that lets you know it's okay to let go of those things. As the mom, it can be a bit tricky because on the one hand, you might be trying to get your kids to get rid of things they're not ready to get rid of and that can be tough. Or on the other hand, you might be tempted to have them keep things they're ready to let go of because you don't want the money wasted. So here's the pile of shoes that she has decluttered and are getting rid of. And here's what she's left with, which is so much better. Okay, I totally did not mean that to sound passive aggressive. I really meant that it looked really good. She thinks my fashion sense is immaculate. <laughs> Raise your hand in the comments section if you can relate to this. As a mom, you just kind of be careful what you say and how you say it. And I often get working and I forget to think of those things. I'm gonna quickly put this Goodwill stuff in here. Yeah. The donate. thing is I don't want to get rid of too much too quickly. If I can find items that replace items I might not be interested in, then I'll do that. But mm -hmm. So this sweater I could put with my off-season clothes. Okay. And then these can go on the coat rack that's in the basement. Are you going to be able to put these on the hanger in the basement? Why do you ask that? Is it high? No. Is it really high up? It's not. It's as you walk in, you know, to the area under my bedroom. Okay. That's all. It's on the left hand side. It's one of those. Oh, that is it go, in that? Uh huh. You know, you just hang it. It's a bar. Okay. Okay. And it has wheels on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm going to get this stuff ready for her to put away. I think there's an element here that you can see as Rachel and I were decluttering her bedroom. You're going to see it again with my husband and I in the basement. And that's that decluttering is a very relational activity and we don't necessarily talk about that a whole lot. All of us have a relationship with material things and I'm not even talking about whether someone is materialistic or not. I'm just saying we all have different things that we value and that are important to us. And then here we are all living in the same home with different relationships to different types of items. One person's attached to clothing, one person's attached to pictures or sentimental items. One person thinks that you could put all your pictures online and just get rid of all physical copies. We all have different relationships to things and I think that it can be hard when you're decluttering and deciding what to keep to honor and respect where each other is in that process. So here we have Goodwill and here we have Trash. All right, I think we did a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did wonderful. It's another day and that's why I'm in a different outfit and we're back in the basement again because I was really afraid you'd miss me down here. And we are gonna take care of this area behind me. 
this area right here, we're gonna try to get this all cleaned up. Who knows, Who knows how far over we'll get, but we'll see. Let's do this first. This, okay, this is, is all stuff I'm getting rid of. Okay. This, most of this stuff is tool related, okay? So it just belongs. Okay, and the then tool. this is trash on top, and then these are donation. If you're new to my channel, this is my husband of 30 years and his name is Robin and he's my best friend in the entire world. Now we have a very different relationship with material things. For me, most of the clutter in the basement is because I didn't want to make a decision. I wanted it out of our living space because I wanted my living space clean and so I boxed it up and put it in the basement thinking I would make that decision at a later time. Well, this is that time. For him, he is constantly concerned that we're getting rid of things that we would have to buy again. There are definitely times I have been too hasty in getting rid of something and he was right and we did actually have to buy it again. So I think we kind of balance each other and we just always are having to be careful to be listening to each other. I once heard in a sermon that arguments over money is not what kills a marriage. It's the way we communicate to each other about that money. And I think it's the same with decluttering. This is donate. These are mine. Does I ever teach Spanish? This is trash. So you could get the, you're gonna get a book if you teach Spanish. Well, who says I'm gonna get a book? This is actually trash. That little conversation is just what I'm referring to. You can see where I'm thinking about the very now moment and I want to get rid of literally everything. And he's more forward thinking of what might be the purpose of that item in the future. The relationship has to be more important than decluttering. This was when we had the thing hanging on the ceiling, the light. Okay, I don't need to know the history of things. All right. I, just need to, like, throw them out. Well, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a chalk marker. I'll put it with the craft stuff. Hold on when you need a friend. I'll never let you go again. Reach out when your mind's uneasy, cause I'll understand. We were just talking about marriage, my husband and I with another couple, and we were saying that sometimes it's a little hard for people to understand our dynamic because we've always been a kind of blunt with each other and we don't get offended or when we do, it doesn't last and we just kind of laugh it off at the end. Uh, we don't take it too terribly seriously. That has definitely helped with this emotional process. So now I'm gonna deal with these notebooks, but already it's looking so much better down here. This is a math notebook. I gotta show you, wait. How extra was I? Look at that, math notes. <gasps> Just a note for all the homeschoolers out there, I don't know if any of you are watching, but we all have a different level of comfort with getting rid of homeschool materials. In the state of Maine, I have to do some sort of assessment at the end of the year, and so I don't keep any of their schoolwork. I only keep the assessments. I do keep their high school materials until they're in college. Once they're in college, I feel pretty safe to get rid of them as I have their transcript. I feel like I'm following the homeschool law, and that is not a part of the law to keep all of their schoolwork, so I don't. This is from our wedding cake. Like, who cares? <laughs> Whenever I'm going to put up a video on YouTube, I always say a prayer 
Lord, what do people need to hear? I really want it to be relevant to you. And today I wanted to just give you a little tiny peek into the conversations and the dilemmas that go on as we seek to declutter together. Because frankly, even if I'm decluttering completely by myself, I still have to be respectful of other people's possessions. I have to either know or be questioning them about what they're level of comfort is and when it really comes down to it and there's something that is really upsetting for someone to get rid of then I just have to keep it in. I have to know that the relationship is more important than the declutter and if they were trying to get rid of something that was important to me I would definitely want to be respected enough that they would keep it even if they thought my reasoning was faulty. I feel like if there's someone who literally can't get rid of anything, you have to get creative in storage and just keep praying for them that at some point they'll feel comfortable to let go of some things. So, now that we're cleaning all this out, getting our trash upstairs, stuff we're donating, we're talking about what we're going to do with the books because we'd like to make this into a little workshop area in case my husband does have something to do with all of these tools. <laughs> You have to agree to this. Oh. So what I'm suggesting is this shelf here, we need to declutter. It's got kitchen stuff and it's got some screens and stuff. This shelf here needs to be decluttered and then this needs to be replaced with a six foot shelf. We can have a shelf behind the bicycles, a shelf right there, and then all the books could slide over it and go on this wall. Okay, so here is the area. Now we have a little bit over here that we gotta go through. But look at all this floor space. We have cleared, probably took about an hour. These are some homeschool materials, keyboards that my husband needs to go through. So there's a little bit, but look at this. So much better. Look at that. So proud of that. And then coming soon, coming soon. Maybe coming up next, that'd be nice. Coming soon. Stairs over here. This is where we have my cleaners. That shelf that we did a long time ago, where I have some food stuff. Those are all empty. The side is mostly all clear. We are doing so much better. Click up in the right corner for my decluttering playlist. Remember, as always, that God loves you. I love you too, and I can't wait to see you next time.